Hello and welcome. This is a short video without being an actual short. The goal is to compare the accuracy of the Radio Code 101 with a 3 inch sodium iodide detector. Now I've mentioned using this uh, dosimeter before and although the dose assessment seems to be very sensitive and accurate, I never really looked at the uh, gamma spectrum accuracy and this is a chance to rectify this oversight. And this idea was suggested by a viewer just like you. So thank you. So in this video, I'll compare the gamma spectrum from a variety of radioactive source on the sodium iodide spectrometer and the infamous radio code 101. First, I measure barium-133 on the sodium iodide detector and matched it with one of the countless library available online. This one is called the Scintillation Spectrometry Gamma Ray Catalog. And for more accurate data, I also use the Gamma Ray Spectrum Catalog for high purity germanium detectors, both available online, link in the description. After calibration, the main peaks are fairly close to the reported value, and I use a quadratic calibration that seems to work well from low to high energy gamma. Cobalt 60 with its uh, two peaks at 1173 keV and 1332 for the high end, and americium 241 at 59 keV for the low end. Polonium 210 is a well known powerful alpha source, but it also has a discrete gamma at 803 keV clearly visible here. For a more complex spectrum, let's look at radium 226. All of the decay daughters are visible mainly from bismuth 214. Matching this with the uranium ore is an easy task. The only difference in the spectrum is the uranium line. Now the radio code comes with a factory pre-calibrated set of value for the spectrum energy calibration and this may or may not be accurate. By matching the known energy peak with the energy given by the instrument, you can tinker with the A value here in the setting to get a better match. And if you screw up, you can always reset to factory default. I change mine to this value, which seems to be somewhat close to the actual energy line. The software highlights the main peak to help you find specific isotopes easily and lined up your spectrum, which can be helpful with this low resolution. Keep in mind that a small change in low energy equals to a far bigger change in higher energy. As mentioned before, the small size of the detector inhibits the resolution, while at the same time, the cesium iodide density allows for greater stop in power and therefore better efficiency. In short, You'll register more gamma interaction with the detector, but get less energy separation. Although the calibration can be readjusted for a better fit, the small size of the detector can also be detrimental in another way. Scintillation crystals are temperature sensitive. The visible light production from valence electron happen in two stages, and the thermal vibration of the lattice interferes with this process. A larger detector would be less prone to rapid temperature changes. To keep it simple, the higher the temperature, the slower the response and the crappier the signal gets. If you're thinking about keeping your detector in liquid nitrogen, it has been done successfully before. I'll leave a couple of paper in the description if you're interested and want to learn more. Although it works, it is not commonly done outside of coincidence detection and since high purity germanium can achieve better resolution, cooling a scintillation detector is a bit pointless since uh, the whole point of using a scintillation detector is to operate at room temperature. Now let me bring your attention back to the polonium. These two sources taped together had a total activity of 1 millicurie in late May 2022 and they are approaching the first half-life and they are now close to the 250 microcurie each. I uh, introduced a thin sheet of beryllium to make this little nuclear sandwich. Now looking at the spectrum of polonium again and this peak show up above 2 mev. If you are watching similar science channel, you may be familiar with the alpha neutron reaction. Some light elements have a weakly bounded nucleus, and in particular beryllium can be used as a target to release neutron from alpha particle bombardment. Because both alpha and beryllium are small, and because of the electric repulsion from both positive nucleus, this reaction is pretty rare. A few million alpha particles fired at the uh, beryllium only release a few dozen neutron on average. The uh, energy distribution of the neutron can vary widely from about 2 mev to around 10 MeV, with a maximum around 4. Neutrons are difficult to detect and measure because of their penetrating power and uh, interaction with moderators. So I was surprised to see this uh, peak on both instruments repeatedly. 
the radio code seems to be able to pick up the few neutrons at the higher end of the spectrum here. But because of its 3000 keV maximum energy, I used the sodium iodide to explore the spectrum beyond 3 MeV. Here is 489 seconds of the polonium alone, and compare this with the uh, beryllium in place, also 489 seconds, and the difference is clear as day. Scintillation detectors do pick up neutrons. The radio codes even display superior performances, perhaps due to the cesium neutron cross section. Unfortunately, without a post-detection pulse shape, there is no way to tell gamma from neutron. To be sure, I could survey the output of my fusor and look for a peak at 2.45 MeV. Actually, I am in the process of building a new one with a twist, but that will be for a future video. For now, the radio code is uh, one of my favorite radiation detection and monitoring device, and despite a few drawbacks, I would still recommend it to any science enthusiast. So, this is probably not your first YouTube video, and you know what to do. Thumbs up if you like it, subscribe if you want, Patreon, bell, share. I hope to see you again on the next one, and thank you for watching. Damn it!